Warner Brothers Movie World. Das ist Hollywood in Germany. Hier wird Movie Magic Wirklichkeit. Hier erlebt man Nervenkitzel pur. Mehr zu sehen. Mehr zu tun. Mehr zu erleben. Warner Brothers Movie World. Europas einzigartiger Movie- und Entertainment-Park in Bottrop, Kirchen. The movie studios type of theme parks have been lucrative investments for entertainment companies for quite some time now. Especially after Disney launched their MGM Studios Park after a rush construction in 1989 as a preemptive strike to Universal Studios Florida, which opened just a few months later in 1990. Soon after, in 1991, Warner Brothers Studios entered the market with their first Warner Brothers Movie World on the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. Three years later, Warner decided to expand to Europe and in 1994 purchased the property of some former non-profitable parks in Germany. A couple of attempts to operate different kind of parks on this property failed, the first being a very European fairy tale forest kind of park called Kirchhellener Märchenwald, the next and longest running iteration called Traumland Park, which was more of a classic amusement park, and finally Bavaria Film Park, which was more like an open air cinema prop piece museum. But it took an American company applying a proven to be successful formula of theme park design to establish a profitable business in this nicely developed area with a huge potential market. Additionally, Warner's investment was subsidized by the state government with an additional 49 million euros or 55 million US dollars. So on June 30th, 1969, with a star-studded grand opening ceremony the day before, Warner Brothers Movie World Germany opened to the public. It was the first proper movie studios inspired theme park in Europe. Just like at the Gold Coast, Warner Brothers Movie World Germany featured all your 80s and 90s movie classics and attractions like The Police Academy Stunt Show, a Gremlins Adventure Dark Ride, a Batman Motion Simulator and the movie magic behind the scenes attraction. The park's coaster lineup would be headlined by a lethal weapon themed suspended looping coaster. You know, back when lethal weapon was actually good. Lethal Weapon 2. This time, they're not taking any crap. But instead of an SLC clone, park visitors were treated to something special. It was Intermin's second multi-inversion coaster and featured a couple of first-time records, a pre-show, theming in the queue line and on the ride, and it is quite an obscure hidden gem in the world of roller coasters. Let's pay a little homage to Lethal Weapon Pursuit. The ride was located in a small themed area called Marienhof. The set was a recreation of a street prominently featured in an eponymous German soap opera. The area featured a restaurant, a beer garden, a wave swinger and a museum of German movie history. Situated on the opposing side of the street was a small movie theater. This is where guests would enter the ride Lethal Weapon Pursuit, die Achterbahn. The queue featured a small screening room, where guests were shown a chase scene from the movie Lethal Weapon 2. Guests would then go outside to a real-life recreation of said scene, and I have to mention that this kind of elaborate queue for a roller coaster had to my knowledge not been done before in Europe, except maybe for Disneyland Paris. And then the soon-to-be police officers proceeded to walk around a corner towards a big dilapidated warehouse complex. Inside the building, the queue would split for the two separate dueling coasters, which had no designated names, so let's just call them left track and right track. On either side, guests would board the police car themed ride vehicles, which were fitted with over the shoulder restraints and windshields. Both roller coasters climbed the parallel lift hill with a maximum height of just 16 meters or 52.5 feet. A small pre drop and 180 degree left handed turn was followed by a curved drop in which the right track would almost drop to ground level while the left track didn't go down as far. Going up again and circling around, both tracks would then drop into the large warehouse building and enter elevator 1 or 2 to slam into the almost circular vertical loopings. These loopings were intense and to be honest kind of scary because of the strobe light and ear-piercingly loud noise. 
exiting the loops, the tracks would separate and each of them would navigate some small helixes, drops and turns at times in total darkness. The tracks, now having switched sides, were brought together again for the second smaller lift hill, where riders could catch their breath for a second. Especially first time riders were surprised by how much punch this little ride had. And it wasn't over just yet. The trains crested the top of the lift hill and then dropped to the right, climbing another small hill and going down again to enter the warehouse's car compound area. This was where the ride's most elaborate special effect would happen. Going over a small airtime hill, riders could hear a car accelerate and then, just before exiting the building, a burning car would fly over the tracks marking the first time a roller coaster would use real fire as a special effect. Distracted by said effect, riders were then taken by surprise into the following hardline roll-in version, the first ever to be built without additional track supports. These hardline rolls had massive amounts of hang time. Both tracks then concluded with the right hand turn switching sides again into the brake run of Germany's first Dueling roller coaster. The Intamin design and Giovanola build ride was the headliner attraction on opening day and probably was one of, if not the most elaborate roller coaster in 1996 in Germany. The ride's layout was innovative, the tracks intertwined and would go over and under each other switching sides all the time and the hardliner version was, at least executed in this way, never seen before. The rough industrial looking warehouse complex housed pretty much all of the ride and its special effects. Let's have a look at that last special effect on the ride, the burning car going over the rider's head. Sadly there isn't too much good POV video of that part of the ride, but we can at least go a little bit behind the scenes of the effect. The burning flying car effect was done by Australia based company FX Illusions and was achieved by putting a car chassis on a lightweight wireframe. This wireframe was connected to another wireframe, which ran on a roller coaster like wheel assembly and was air propelled on an actual piece of track hidden out of view of the riders. If you have any idea where the fire mechanism is in those pictures, let us know in the comments below. Riders would go over the airtime hill, hear the accelerating car, the ride going down and up again with a nice head chopper moment to then have a burning car going over the riders' heads and then being thrown into the car crash simulating hardline rowing. This experience from beginning to end probably was the first introduction to storyline roller coasters to a European audience and the first inverting roller coaster for many a young rider. Sadly for the ride, the park and for us, business was not as profitable as expected. As usual, the decline of the ride began with a change in ownership of the park. When Premier Parks purchased the park from Warner Entertainment in late 1999, the fire effect was deactivated. Also mostly gone was the racing feature, as the park tended to operate only one track at a time. The park was sold again to Star Parks and lost the Warner Bros. movie license in 2004 or 5, so the now generic name Movie Park Germany renamed the ride to a generic cop car chase. The cinema in the queue line would not be used anymore and without its license and effects, riders began to notice that the ride was becoming so rough the restraints were actually hurting. Some engineers in the German coaster community said that because the concrete for the foundation of the ride was poured in winter with an unsuitable concrete mixture used, the ride was doomed from the beginning. The roller coaster was operating as cop car chase for two more years, not racing or dueling without a pre-show and without the fire effect. When rumors of demolishing the ride began to spread, while most fans of the ride weren't too happy about it, some even looked forward to what the park would build next, with a sudden drop in excitement after the replacing Santa Monica Pier was eventually opened. Then the ride was unceremoniously destroyed. It is sad to see any roller coaster being torn down like this, even more so if it was such a unique ride as Lethal Weapon Pursuit. At least we can take a look at the unbelievably tight, almost circular loopings that look very similar to the design used in Intermin's Disney Indiana Jones rides. Nowadays, instead of a thrilling themed roller coaster, the Santa Monica Pier offers a few flat rides and a totally different atmosphere. 
I haven't been to the park since they rebranded as Movie Park Germany, but memories of Lethal Weapon Pursuit will always come to mind when thinking about going for a visit. It was one of the most spectacular rides in Germany at the time, it amazed visitors from all around and is Intermin's obscure masterpiece that is lost to time. <laughs>